Hello there. I have been... Hi. <laughs> I have lately found myself in the rabbit hole of what I believe is called booktube. <laughs> That is basically where everyone talks about books on YouTube and shares what they're reading, their favorite books, shows off their library. Oh my, River, come on. Someone wants to be a star. But anyway, I really enjoyed just listening to people talk about books and reading. I've been reading so much more lately with all the extra free time we've had. And it's been wonderful. It was something I used to do a lot as a kid. And I'm only recently getting back into reading a lot because it is so enjoyable. And it's amazing what you can learn from a book. If not learn, then the story that you can let yourself become just completely surrounded by. It's different than a movie. A book really forces you to put yourself into the story and you have to dedicate time and effort to take it all in. Come here. Come here. So, <laughs> my big novel that I'm attacking right now is Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. And I am enjoying it. I'm a little over halfway through now and it is definitely a time commitment. But I find it to be a wonderful story and it's kind of something that you have to work for you know you can't just sit down and watch the two-hour movie although you can and I plan on doing that when I finish it but reading the actual book makes you really appreciate the time and effort that went into it so much more that being said I wanted to show off my own little library today show you some books that I have read, that I mean to read, that have been sitting on my shelf for as long as I can remember and will probably never be cracked open. But without further ado, let's go. All right, so here is the initial overview of my very humble bookcase. I've seen some people with epic collections and hopefully I am there one day. But for now, this is what I have and I'm utilizing just about every inch of space I have. So let's start at the top. We just have some random knickknacks. These are my boyfriend's <laughs> collections from over the years. A couple stuffed animals. I painted that, both of those when I was little and a Michigan jersey for our dog. It fit him for like a week and then he grew out of it. Now it's just decoration. <laughs> okay, so let's start here. I don't really have any sort of order that I've put things in. They've just sort of ended up where they've ended up and I kind of use color and size to organize, but not really based on topic matter. Light is the New Black. This is what I plan on reading. It's kind of like a spiritual self-help book. 101 essays that will change the way you think. This is a book that I have been reading in parts and it's very interesting. I like her writing a lot, Brianna Wiest. She has a lot of good points, but this is the kind of thing that you spread out over maybe a year, read a couple every few days or so. The Magic, based on The Secret. Haven't read it yet, haven't read The Secret, but I've been hearing all sorts of things about the law of attraction and I wanted to see what this is all about. How to Love by Thich Nhat Hanh. He is a monk, just talking a little bit about philosophy. Short, sweet, really cute book. It's adorable actually, let me pull it out and show. See how cute this is. He just has very short little vignettes here on particular topics. I read this in about a day. It was very enjoyable. Super cute. That would make a great gift for someone, I'm sure. Okay. I am getting really into nutrition lately and ethical eating, and it's something that I am like 
struggling over in my own brain with, I cannot decide whether I should be a vegetarian or just more conscious of it or go vegan. Like it's making me crazy lately. But anyway, I'm trying to be informed, eat pretty, how to be a conscious eater. I'm reading this, haven't started eating animals. I am halfway through this. It is so interesting. I really enjoy this book. It's eye-opening, but it's not like you need to be a vegan or you're a terrible person. It really does present both sides of the story, but it definitely makes you think. And I think that's a problem with most people just choosing ignorance over something that's so important. Anyway, that's another topic entirely. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I read A New Earth, really liked it. I've been wanting to read this. It's waiting for me to crack it open, but it's all about living in the present moment and not worrying too much about the past or the future. Gorgeously Green, how to live a more earth-friendly life. Definitely a goal of mine. Haven't really delved into this, but it will happen soon. The Wellness Project, someone's account of going healthy. Living the farm sanctuary life. This is like my ultimate dream when I'm like 60. I want to live on a farm sanctuary. I don't know how possible that is actually going to be, but it would be so cool. Eat Feel Fresh. I've been studying Ayurveda a little bit lately and this is a cookbook utilizing those principles. The Gorgeously Green Diet, more about living a sustainable life. High vibrational beauty. I'm kind of into like the weird woo woo stuff. So this had some cool recipes in it and uh, rituals that are seasonal. So different things for spring, summer, fall and winter. And the moon juice cookbook, also similar to this. It has really inspired me to get back in the kitchen more and to do more things from scratch. So making my own nut milk is going to be an upcoming project and thanks to inspiration from this. Okay, now we have a thousand places to see before you die. Hopefully I can check a bunch of these off before I die. I'm very into travel, so I've got a couple of travel books here. These I borrowed from my mom. She was a big Monty Python fan, therefore Michael Palin, yeah. The Gulf. I do not live anywhere near the Gulf, but I have many family connections there and it is it has always been a place near and dear to my heart. And this book was so interesting. It just, it's terrifying the things that humans can do to an environment and how quickly. It was kind of a sad book, but I'd rather not be ignorant about things I could have an impact on. Road Trip USA. I am such a fan of road tripping even though I'm basically talking about sustainability and I'm sure driving a car around the country isn't the most sustainable, but at least I get good gas mileage. And it's a preferable way to see the country than flying, in my opinion. It takes longer, but I love the adventure of it so much. I've been lucky enough to visit 40 out of 50 US states and hopefully I can visit all 50 before I'm dead. Here we have Chinese. I am slowly relearning Chinese. It's kind of a difficult language, but super interesting. I teach English to Chinese kids, so it's kind of a motivator for me. Tiny little book from my mom. Love and wishes for my daughter. Just a cute little gift book. Okay. All right, next shelf down. First. This is a sculpture that I made. It's super weird and abstract, but I made it out of aluminum, I think, and then just painted it all these crazy rainbow colors. I'm gonna set it aside for now. Here's my elephant and my angel. I got this after my grandpa died. It's real cute. Okay. The, no, <laughs> natural healing, wisdom, and know-how. I'm very big into holistic health and beauty, and so that touches on it very much so. This book is huge and full of so much knowledge, and it's actually how I first 
learned about what Ayurveda was and started exploring what that means. New Orleans, one of the craziest, most exciting places on earth. I have so many memories of this city. It's my second home. I love it. This is just a book celebrating this weird, awesome, crazy city. Then one of my favorite artists, oof, Monet, all about Monet. Yes, pretty, pretty pictures. The organized home, <laughs> working on it. The Beatles, this was like a Rolling Stone little anthology about, oh, I can't even get it out. Basically the coolest band ever to exist. I think it lists their 100, yeah, 100 greatest songs. The Roll Doll Treasury, this is from my childhood. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. If I ever have a kid, I'm going to relish the opportunity to teach them about Roll Doll and all of his crazy awesome stories. 99 Lives, Cats in History. To be honest, I'm more of a dog person. I'm not even sure how I got this book, but it's here. <laughs> Big Book of Culinary Medicine, again, all about holistic health and nutrition. Harper Lee, Go Set a Watchman, I borrowed this from my mom, have not read it yet. I read um, To Kill a Mockingbird, but I don't know how motivated I am to read this, to be honest, we'll see. This is from my childhood, Bedtime Stories, again, hanging on to it in case I ever have a kid one day. Treasury of Hands, Christian Anderson, again, really nice little stories. The Gift of the Magi. This is by uh, O. Henry. Not too familiar with it. Haven't really cracked it open. An introduction to fiction. Don't know how I got this. Must have been a textbook from some class or other. I have no memory of it, actually, which is weird. Anyway, Bill Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything. I am a big fan of Bill Bryson. He writes a lot of travel books, usually. This was his way of trying to sum up the history of everything, in quotation marks, in one small book. It was an interesting read. He is a very humorous writer. Good times. 20 something or 20 everything for those in a quarter life crisis. <laughs> uh, sexographies. We all need a little spiciness in our life. This was an interesting book. This lady talked about like having threesomes and shit and stuff. Sorry. More Bill Bryson traveling. He's traveling America, Europe, and then the Appalachian Trail, which I would absolutely love to hike a portion of that one day. We'll see what happens. How to talk so kids will listen. I used to be a teacher. I got so burned out on that. Ooh! Oh my god, that was so close. Anyway, I kind of want nothing. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? I kind of want nothing to do with children for a while, to be honest, unless it's my own, and even then, whew. <laughs> this is Brad's book, my boyfriend. Don't know what it's about other than doing hard things. <laughs> this is a book from school, Tales from the Heart, just a memoir. My mom's favorite author, Ann Tyler. Never read her, borrowed this. I'll read it at some point, probably. Tom Robbins Jitterbug Perfume. Okay, I really want to read more Tom Robbins. This book was so weird and interesting and part of it took place in New Orleans, which I thought was really cool. He has such a fascinating writing style that I can't wait to see what else he has to offer. This is Brad's book, something about Michael J. Fox. Stephen King, a collection of short stories. Some are okay, some are not so good. Um, I read better. And then Nicholas Sparks, I took this book for free from some little like library thing. I don't know, it wasn't anything special. Okay, moving down to the third shelf. Okay, so let's start down here. <laughs> the Lawn Bible. I have never mowed a lawn in my life. Clearly that book does not belong to me. Clean skin from within. Again, I'm big on holistic health and beauty, and that basically stems from having good nutrition and health. Likewise, super health, 
just about nutrition and stuff. The Beginner's Guide to Essential Oils. Another hobby I'm getting into more and more lately. I am learning about them and I recently bought a, um, uh, what is it called? The thing that blows the steam into the room with the essential oil. Gosh, it's eluding me. I bought one of those and I've been trying out all different types of essential oils and I have been loving tea tree lately and I feel like that's good for your lungs, especially in the time of COVID. So, gonna learn more about that. Lawn care business guide. Yawn, boring, Blah. Jordan Peterson, 12 rules for life. I listened to the audiobook and I wanted to actually have it in print because I get so much more out of print books than audiobooks. He's just very wise and I enjoy listening to him talk and reason and I'm definitely going to reread this in book form. Renegade Beauty, such a good book. It really opened my eyes to the fact that beauty is so much beyond what comes in a little jar or a bottle. It's about how we interact with nature and this was just such an eye-opening book that really kind of inspired me to go down the path of holistic wellness and beauty. Healing mushrooms. So as you can tell from my YouTube name, I am kind of obsessed with mushrooms. I want to learn everything I can about them. They're so weird and alien and strange and cool. Love it. More about essential oil, just the essentials. The bullet journal method. Okay, so this is something I am currently reading. I'm trying to learn the method and I want to start actually journaling this way because I think it's going to help me organize my thoughts and just be a better me. Marijuana Grower's Handbook. Um, may or may not have given this a try at some point in my life, but yeah. Osho, living on your own terms. So similar to the little book on love I pulled out earlier, this is just a philosophy book all about not doing what everyone else does just because they're all doing it, but being an individual and making your own thoughtful choices. Daring Greatly, Brene Brown. So Brene Brown is full of wisdom and I thought this book was interesting. It talked about vulnerability and the benefits of putting yourself out there. Skin cleanse, I'm learning how to adjust my diet to be healthy and so it can reflect my inner beauty, hopefully. <laughs> Chakra healing, haven't read this yet, but I'm pretty interested in this. I'm a big yoga practicer and I kind of wanted to delve a little deeper into sort of the more metaphysical side of it. Michael Pollan, yes. Okay, The Omnivore's Dilemma was one of my favorite books I ever, ever read. I do not have it because I gave it away to someone, but this is another excellent book of his, The Botany of Desire, about plants and how certain plants have come to shape humans. I think he talks about potatoes, tulips, marijuana, and there was one other that, oh, the apple. He talks about these four plants and how they shaped mankind. It was so fascinating. The War of Art. Everyone tells me I need to read this and I know I need to and I want to. I just haven't gotten there yet. But I want to break through my blocks and win my inner creative battles. Okay, Robert McFarlane, The Wild Places. He's another travel kind of wildlife writer. Haven't read it. Can't wait to read it though. It's probably just gonna make me wanna go camping. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. I really read this book super fast and it's exactly what it says it is. It's very uh, accessible for people who don't have a degree in astrophysics and it's just fascinating. Space is so freaking interesting to me. I wanna learn more about that too. Happy, healthy, plant-based eating guide by Boho Beautifuls, Juliana and Mark Spickleluck. I have followed them for a very long time on YouTube. That's how I got so into yoga. They're wonderful. I'm not vegan, but I still gleaned a lot of helpful information from their book, which is so cute. Another Michael Pullman, this is just a little guy. Food Rules, and Eater's Manual. It's very uh, easily digestible, excuse the pun, about good rules for eating well and healthily and sustainably. 
And then the things trees know. This is just a really cute little gift book I was given again by my mom. And it's just cute. Just words of wisdom from trees. I just love nature so much. Yes, thank you, mom. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, this down here, this is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, I read a little bit of it. It's kind of long-winded and it says the same thing over and over again. It's basically the law of attraction. So it was still fascinating though. I've got a couple Chinese workbooks here that I should probably spend a little more time doing. I have like a 250 day streak on Duolingo. <laughs> so I'm, I am practicing every day, but I could probably delve a little deeper. JK Rowling, The Casual Vacancy. This book was all right. I think Harry Potter was definitely where it's at. I currently have this listed on eBay. I don't even really wanna keep it. it takes up a lot of room. I'm probably never gonna read it again. Alchemy of Herbs. Similar to my, where'd it go? Oh, Essential Oils Guide. All about herbs and how to use them in our life. Brad's book, Men Votionals, don't know what it's about. My book, The Feminine Revolution, how to use your femininity to get what you want and not in like an evil, bitchy kind of way, but just, we have power ladies, we really do. Imperfect Courage. This is from a founder of a company called Noonday, which employs people around the world to make jewelry. Beautiful, beautiful jewelry. I have such a collection of it. I'm a big fan of the company and what they do. This book was how she founded it. Pretty interesting. Stephen King on writing. So I want, one of my goals is to become more of a writer. And I read this a long time ago and I recently repurchased it to reread it and I'm going to get around to it very soon. But I want to, maybe a New Year's goal of mine will be to just write more often, like way more often. I journal every day and I've journaled for about three consecutive years every day, but I, I need to extend it beyond like a little, like here's what I did today. That's basically all I do. Essentialism. I've also been told that this is a really good book that can kind of help you dial in on what it is you should be working on and not continually get distracted by everything going on in the world. Big Magic, I read this. More about creativity and how to unleash your creativity. Very good book. The Empathy Exams, haven't read it. I was surprised to hear a friend of mine also had it on her shelf and hadn't read it. I thought it was just this random obscure book, but I guess other people have heard of it, so that's cool. Maybe we'll both get around to reading it eventually. The Overstory, this is a collection of short stories about trees or like that have to do with trees or the metaphor of a tree. I thought it was gonna be so interesting. As you can see, I got a little ways into it and then I was like, uh, this is kind of getting weird. I don't know, it didn't really capture me. So it's on permanent hold for now. Food and nutrition, what everyone needs to know. My mom gave this to me. It's interesting, but it's not a whole lot of new information for me. How not to kill your house plant. This has already come in handy. It's helped me to preserve their lives for a little longer. And yeah, everyone could use this information. They're not all the same. You can't just give them water and expect them to be fine. They need a little extra care. Your money or your life. This is a pretty interesting book about finances and managing your finances and whatnot. Um, I'm reading it slowly. It's got good tips, but it's not exactly like the most page turning amazing thing ever. The Alchemist, a famous, famous book worth the read. I breezed through this book. It was interesting. And I have a feeling it's the kind of book that you get more and more out of the more times you read it. So if I read it again, I might completely get a new insight that I didn't even get the first time, but I liked that book. The Master. I don't even know what this is. 
some Chinese philosophy book. Sort of like the Tao Te Ching. It's probably just Chinese philosophy. I, I don't even think I've opened it. And then I have The Mastery of Love, written by the same man who wrote The Four Agreements. I read The Four Agreements. Very interesting stuff. I'm going to read The Mastery of Love. I'm in a, a relationship and I think just learning better ways to cherish each other would be awesome. Not that you need to be in a relationship to have love for people, but it's definitely like a main source of my energy and I want to be uh, making sure I'm putting in good effort and yeah. <laughs> okay, good deal. Let's move down below. All right, this is my hidden cabinet. Okay, let's start up top. I have a random cookbook that didn't fit in my kitchen. I'll take you there next. The Oshi Glows Cookbook, Vegan Recipes. I'm not a vegan, but I do enjoy cooking vegan food because why not make that choice when I can? I'm not beholden to it, but it just forces you to eat way more plants and healthy food in general, and it can still taste amazing. Then I've got two books by Dr. Greger, How Not to Die, which is basically a treatise on veganism. And then he also writes How to Survive a Pandemic, which I'm currently reading and it's freaking me out, man. Oh my gosh, we need to reform so much about what we do in the US. Our factory farms are disgusting. And basically, <laughs> The coronavirus was like nothing compared to what could be coming down the pipe if we continue doing what we're doing. So don't be ignorant, learn about it and make choices. Okay, Jane Austen, four classic novels. I've been wanting to read more Jane Austen. I've read Pride and Prejudice back in high school and I don't think I got everything out of it that I would get out of it now as an adult. So I wanted to give that another shot along with three of her other novels. So this is a big boy and I'll get to it when I'm in the mood for a classic. Okay, recently cleaned out my uh, old stuff from my parents' house. So this is from when I was a kid, A Treasury of Great Horse Stories. And turns out there's some really interesting authors in here that I didn't really appreciate when I was a kid, including Tolstoy, which I am currently reading, Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. So it will be interesting to hear his perspective on horses. Okay, so this is my very small classical collection. Definitely want to add to this. There's nothing better than the feeling of finishing a classical novel because it really does take a little discipline. And it kind of puts me back into high school and I just did not appreciate it back then. I would read a book and be like, oh, this is such a drag. And now I read these and I'm like, what? The prose is beautiful. This is teaching me so much about life. So Anna Karenina, currently reading. This is um, The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. Madame Bovary, Alas Babylon, An American Tragedy, Don Quixote, and Spring Moon, which is the only other one of these that I have read already. I thought this was really good. It takes place in China around uh, the 1800s. It was just really interesting. And it talked partly about how they used to bind their feet, the women. And it was like so disturbing. And I looked up images of it and Oh my God, I can't believe they used to do that. I'm so glad it's not practiced anymore, but gosh, the things that women have gone through in history for beauty, it's like crazy, right? Sorry, I'm losing my focus a little. <laughs> Wuthering Heights by Bronte. I read this when I was in like ninth grade, probably just for fun. Yeah, that's me. Um, again, this is something I'm probably gonna get way more out of now that I'm an adult. We'll see. And then Aesop's Fables, a classic. Of course, these are really interesting. They teach you little life lessons about the world. And I don't know how old these are, but they're like, they're like ancient stories, I feel like. 
super cool. If I ever have a kid again, I'll probably introduce the, that, the, these to them at some point. And then we have Crime and Punishment, another dense Russian novel that I plan on reading one of these days. And then, just because I had nowhere else to put it yet, my most recent book purchase, My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to her while she was alive, but obviously her death has sparked me to look into her and I read a couple articles about her life and she's so fascinating. Her wisdom just blows me away. And I already read the introduction of this book and I just cannot wait to learn more about this amazing lady and what she's done for America. Okay, so there we have my bookshelf. Let's go to the kitchen really quick for the last leg of this tour. Okay, hopefully you can't hear my dishwasher in the background too much. If so, I apologize. These are my few cookbooks that I use. And I'll start with these two on the end by Allison Roman, Dining In and Nothing Fancy. She makes some like really cool recipes. They're kind of off the wall and I have made a couple of them, but they're like, I don't know. Let me pull one off to show you like. So, <laughs> the vegan in me, yes. <laughs> they're beautiful. But yeah, I don't know. I don't even really know what escarole is. <laughs> I think it's lettuce. So. These deal with some ingredients that are maybe a little more obscure. That's why I don't cook out of them too often. Then I have whole food cooking every day. If you can't be a vegan, you may as well cook with whole foods, right? <laughs> Love real food. This is one of my favorites lately. It's from the blog Cookie and Kate. Again, it deals with whole foods, not necessarily vegan. I do think she is vegetarian I don't know super good party in my plant party in your plants this is a vegan cookbook haven't really delved into it yet healthier together meals for two soups vegan for everybody ouch <laughs> how not to die cookbook so dr. Gregor's cookbook and then I really like both of these too these are the Sprouted Kitchen and the Sprouted Kitchen Bowl and Spoon. So I just did a video on my favorite cookie recipe, which is out of this book. So check that out. You will not be disappointed. It's so yummy. So this is my little collection of cookbooks. I try to use them often, but sometimes it's just another pizza that you throw in the oven. Right, River? Yep. Cool. So there you have it. That's my collection of books. Uh, it's something I'm always adding to. It's one of my favorite things to buy books. <laughs> if you have read any of the books on my shelf and have loved them, hated them, let me know. I would love to hear your opinions. If there is an author of mine that you've seen that I should read other books on, please let me know. I want to start collections of authors that are especially interesting to me. So just share, share with me what you love. And I am always looking to explore new things and learn and read excellent stories, both new and old. So please let me know what you think. And River and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, my. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh.